In this lesson, we're going to talk about the law of signs, and um, we're going to learn when to apply the law of signs and how to do that. So, before we actually get to the law of signs, we need to talk about the congruence axioms. Um, if you have a side angle side uh, set up, if you have a triangle where you know two sides and the angle between them, then that triangle is congruent or exactly the same as another triangle that has the same side angle side information. So side angle side guarantees us one unique triangle. So does angle side angle and so does side side side. So if we if we have two sides and the angle between them or if we have two angles in the side between them or if we have three sides. Any one of those situations guarantees us one unique triangle. That's important because if we're going to use a formula to find a missing, say we uh, use a formula to find a missing angle here, I want to make sure that there's only one possible answer, not two possible answers. And so what these congruence axioms are telling us is yes, if you find a missing angle, that is the only possible value that missing angle could have. So we're guaranteed a unique triangle. That's important. Now, an oblique triangle is any triangle that's not a right triangle. The measures of three sides and three angles of a triangle can be found if at least one side and any other two measures are known. So I do have to know one side, but beyond that, if I know two additional angles or a side and an angle, or two additional sides, I'm going to be able to find all the other missing information. Our book breaks the triangles down into cases like this. Case 1 is when we know one side and two angles. If that happens, it's either an SAA or an ASA. In other words, uh, we know two angles in the side between them, or we know two angles in a side that's not between them. In either case, we're going to see in a minute that whenever we have a case one scenario, we use the law of signs. Case two is when we have two sides and one angle that is not between them. This is called SSA. The SSA uh, case is a little thorny because this case can lead to more than one triangle. In other words, if all you know about a triangle is that is, is two sides in an angle. Sometimes there can be two different triangles that can re result based on whether one of the unknown angles is acute or obtuse. And you can't know that based on just this information here. And sometimes it might be that uh, your two sides in an angle won't even close up and form a triangle. So case two can lead to no triangle at all. Um, case three is when we have two sides in the angle between them. That's called SAS. And we're going to see in section 7.3 that this requires us to use the law of cosines to find the missing side. And case four is when we know all three sides and we don't know any angles. So to find the missing angles, we'll have to use the law of cosines to find one of the missing angles. And then we're going to be able to use the law of sines to find the other missing angle. Note that AAA is not one of our congruence axioms. So if we know all three angles of a triangle, we still don't know anything about its size. Um, triangles that have the same angles are similar triangles, not congruent triangles. So the sides could still, you know, there's still a variety of triangles that could fit the description if, if the description only um, goes off of the angles. Okay, now let's derive the law of sines, or let's see if we can uh, see where the, the law comes from. Here I have a triangle A, B, C, and it is not guaranteed to be a right triangle, but they've drawn us a height here, and this height is perpendicular to the bottom so that uh, the angle D here is a perfect right angle on the right side and, of course, on the left side as well. Now, if we focus just on the little left triangle, 
we can see that this right triangle over here, uh, the sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse, which is H over C. And if we focus on the right side, then we can say the sine of angle C would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's H over A. Now the H is not really important except that both relationships contain H. So if you solve both equations for H, H is equal to C sine A and H is equal to A sine C, well they're both equal to H so they should be equal to each other. And now this is the law of sines, it's just not in its most familiar form. What they usually do is solve it so that uh, the sine of A is over side A and the sine of C is over side C. Now what about the B side? Well if you take this same triangle and flip it over so that this side runs along the bottom. See, this side is here. And side C is here. And side B is here. All right, this side is here. Okay. Now, instead of drawing um, the, the height here, which, you know, wouldn't be helpful now, let's drop a perpendicular here. Okay, and we'll call this H. All right, now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to start with angle B. Now, I know angle B is really inside the triangle, but whatever the sine of B is, the sine of this side is the same thing. You think about it, like on a coordinate system, a, a quadrant one angle and a quadrant two angle with the same reference angle, they have the same sign. So it's okay for us to call this angle B. All right, now we can say that the sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse, that's H over C, and the sine of C is opposite over hypotenuse. See, this time you have to look at the big, uh, the big outside triangle. And so the sine of C is H over B, opposite over hypotenuse. And now solve both equations for H and set them equal to each other. If they're equal to H, they're equal to each other. And rearrange. And now we have sine of B over B equals sine of C over C, but that also equals sine of A over A. All right, so there is the law of sines as we normally see it. Here's another way that we normally see it too, with the side on the top and the sine in the bottom. Those same three fractions just turned over. And you can see that according to the law of sines, the lengths of the sides in a triangle are proportional to the sines of the measures of the angles opposite to them. And here it is in the form where we first saw it with the signs in the top. Now, when you're actually using this, the way you should do it is to make it the easiest. If you're looking for a side, put the sides in the top. If you're looking for an angle, put the angles in the top. It doesn't matter how you turn it. Um, you just always put your unknown that you're searching for in the top. And here is our first example. We're going to solve triangle ABC if A equals 32 degrees and C equals uh, 81.8 degrees and A equals 42.9 centimeters. Okay, I had to pause for a second and rearrange the labels on my diagram. They didn't quite match the uh, description, but I think they do now. So A is 32 degrees and C is 81.8 degrees and side A is 42.9 centimeters. Okay, so the easiest thing to do actually first is to find angle B because we don't need any special laws for that. We can just um, subtract from 180. So it looks like B is 66.2 degrees. Okay, now by the law of sines, if we will uh, make a fraction out of A over the sine of A, that's going to be proportional to B over the sine of B, or C over this, uh, sorry, C over the sine of C. Um, now, since we know angle B and angle C, um, 
it doesn't matter which we find first. Uh, let's go ahead. Here's our uh, a over the sine of a. And here I've got c over the sine of angle c. So a over sine a equals c over sine c. And we just need to isolate the c. So we'll multiply both sides by sine of 81.8. And the sine of 81.8 will come up here. So the top will say 42.9 times the sine of 81.8. And the bottom will say sine of 32. And just punch it in your calculator. And you should get approximately 80.1 centimeters. Okay. Um, now let's find side B. So I'm still going to start with A over the sine of A, and this time I'm going to have B over the sine of angle B, which we already figured out angle B was 66.2 degrees. So same thing, um, multiply both sides by the sine of 66.2, and punch it in the calculator, and B is approximately 74.1 centimeters. Now, what you should do is just take a second and make sure that your largest side, which is C, is across from your largest angle, and that your smallest side, which is A, is across from your smallest angle, and that is the case here, so it's a good, that's just a good check that you haven't made a careless error somehow. Now, as always, whenever we're solving problems where we find one value and then another and then another, um, we want to always use values given in the problem as far as we can and not use values that we calculated ourselves because if you use, if you make a careless error and then use that answer to find another answer, of course your mistake is going to propagate throughout the problem. And another thing is that um, if you make a calculation and you round off, say to one or two decimal places, and then you use that rounded off value in another answer uh, to get another answer, the more, the more rounding you do, the bigger your error becomes. A rounding of a rounding of a rounding is just going to, in the end, look nothing like the original. So um, we always just you know, try to either keep extra decimal places or uh, stay in exact form till the very end so that you're not rounding in the middle. Okay, here's another word problem. Kurt Daniels wishes to measure the distance across the river. He determines that C is 112.9 degrees, A is 31.1 degrees, and B is 347.6 feet. Find the distance A across the river. So here we don't really have to solve the whole triangle. We just um, are supposed to find side A. And they've drawn the triangle for us. So let's see what we have. You see how this is angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So this is case one, meaning we can use the law of sines to set it up. And um, the first thing I guess we're going to want to do is, we're, well, we know we're going to need A and the sine of A. Now I also, I'm going to either need B and the sine of B or uh, C and the sine of C. Now I know angle C I don't have angle B right now, but I've either got to find angle B so I can use this side, or I've got to find side C so I can use this angle. It's much easier to find the missing angle when we know the other two. So first off, angle B is 180 minus 31.1 uh, minus 112.9. So angle B is 36 degrees. Now, A over the sine of A, and we'll, that'll be equal to B over the sine of B. So 347.6 over the sine of 36. Multiply both sides by the sine of 31.1. Punch it in the calculator. And it's approximately 305.5 feet. And next we are going to talk about the law of cosines. Um, which is what we'll need if we don't have angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side.